intense closeness to the front row. Um, so really sorry. I will not take particularly long. We want to give time at the end of this very brief presentation for you to meet some of the teams, and I know some of you have particular questions about your students. But just to get it kicked off, my name is Peter Howe, and I am the principal of UWC Atlantic. I arrived here in March of 2017, and I've just completed my 14th year in UWC. And I hope uh, it is also the case for you that you're inspired by the mission and values of UWC. When I found out about the movement in 2001, I thought it was too good to be true. That there were these schools around the world that brought together the best and the brightest to live and study together for the final two years of their high school experience. And the more I learned about the movement, the more inspired I was. And it took me four years of trying before I finally got my foot in the door at UWC Adriatic in Italy, where I spent seven years, uh, and then I moved on to the UWC in the Netherlands, and UWC Maastricht for five years, and then finally here. So the purpose of today really is to welcome you and to empathize with you. I'm also a fellow UWC parent. Uh, my wife Sally is here somewhere as well. Our eldest went to UWC Pearson College in Canada. He's now 25. Our daughter went to UWC USA. And our youngest is currently at UWC Red Cross Nordic. So I know exactly how you're feeling today. I know what an incredible leap of faith you were taking. The great thing about the teenage brain is it's ready to just jump into the these things, the middle-aged adult brain, which we share, is always seeing what could go wrong, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen. And of course, you all have vivid imaginations, so I'm sure you've had a few sleepless nights. But what we want to reassure you, if I can get my PowerPoint to work. Spacebar. Spacebar, there we go, the techie thing. What we want to reassure you is the well-being of your students is utmost in our mind. But UWC is not a typical education. The whole premise of UWC is that what takes place outside the classroom is as or more important than what takes place inside the classroom. 52 years ago, the IB Diploma Program was developed here in collaboration with the Geneva International School as a means to have a common curriculum so that students from around the world could have a piece of paper when they graduated, but so we could get on with the important work that we felt we were doing, which was bringing difference together. Often international schools are sold as melting pots, erasing difference. We all have a shared humanity. We do, in fact, have a shared humanity, but we do not have a shared history. And I think one of the brilliant ideas of Kurt Hahn is let's not waste time, time trying to resolve our past differences. Let's work together towards a better future. Which is why service has always been at the heart of UWC. So all of your kids will have a weekly service commitment to the outside community. They will also have service commitments within the community. You may have already seen in the houses the, the duty rosters, you know, when rooms are responsible for making sure the day rooms are tidy. Obviously, keeping rooms tidy is another challenge that many of them face. Hopefully, you've trained them well. So, so what we're interested in in this mission to make education a force to unite people, nations, and cultures for peace and a sustainable future is the make education a force part. For us, we view what we do as a laboratory for learning, and we want to be experimental. And in fact, this year, we've really put our money where our mouth is by appointing our inaugural Director of Learning Innovation, Sean McInerney, who will introduce himself later. We are absolutely committed to developing the next IB Diploma, so your students will be expected to participate in our experiments as we try and develop the education of the 21st century. And we do this through the lens of UWC values. And I hope you've seen this list in your research on UWC. 
international and intercultural understanding, celebration of difference, personal responsibility and integrity, mutual responsibility and respect, compassion and service, respect for the environment, a sense of idealism, personal challenge, and perhaps most importantly, action and personal example. We're all very good at talking about things. Getting on and doing something about it is a challenge we all face. And for me, the best metaphor I can come up with for what your students are about to experience is the hero's quest or the hero's journey. There will be setbacks. There will be challenges. And that's part of the learning journey. Kurt Hahn, and this was well before the science of the brain has confirmed what he believed, felt passionately that teenagers of this age are willing and ready and able to take on authentic responsibility. One of his famous sayings was, you are needed. And another was, there is more in you than you think. But that responsibility has to be authentic. The teenage brain, we have now learned, is the maximum capacity brain. Our brains shrink from the end of teenagehood. They become more efficient, so we as adults think we know more than our teenagers do. But in fact, it's firing in many incredible creative ways. So teenagers know when the responsibility we give them is authentic or not. We have to allow them to fail, to fall down, to stand up, and get on with it. So I'm not promising that the journey over the next two years will be easy, but I can assure you that there will always be the reassuring presence of adults. I'm sorry this slide isn't bigger. This is a visual of what we've tried to capture as the UWC model of education. And what you'll see at its heart is a deliberately diverse, engaged, and motivated community in pursuit of the UWC mission. <coughs> Deliberate diversity comes in many forms. We have cultural diversity, national diversity, religious diversity, socioeconomic diversity. The point is, as I said at the beginning, being exposed to difference stimulates the brain. It makes you think more carefully. It makes you hopefully empathize with the experience of others. But the key word here is community in pursuit of the UWC mission. A UWC education is not something we do to students. It's something we do with students. I was attracted to the UWC mission and values. I sought to join UWC. I honestly didn't care which UWC it was. And your children, too, have applied to the UWC movement, and they happen to have the incredible privilege of coming here. The original UWC, the greatest UWC, the most beautiful UWC, despite the Welsh web. So as I suggested earlier, we're informed by the UWC values, but the other defining feature of UWC is we believe in experiential education. Experience, every, every minute of your life is an experience, but we deliberately use the situations we put students in as learning opportunities. Whenever we're thinking about how we want to run the residences, four to a room, well, why do we put four in a room? It's not because it's more convenient or more affordable, it's because we believe in constructing these rooms, and the house parents are very deliberate at putting those rooms together, that you will have difference immediately, but difference that is manifested in things like when do you turn the lights on? When do you listen to music? How tidy do you keep the room? Those initial contacts with people who come from completely different backgrounds are incredibly important. And then the other aspect, which I know frustrates some parents to no end, is academic is only one tranche of the circle that we're focusing on. As I said at the beginning, service is at the heart of UWC. Planning to serve others is one of the greatest experiences that students have. Being active, so engaging with the environment. We have incredible woodlands, we have the seafront, we have the sports hall, so remaining physically active, active. The academic, obviously, but social interactions as well. Your students will tell you about these incredible conversations they have until two in the morning. Of course, it's always about serious things. 
But I know, for example, that my son's experience, he had grown up on a UWC campus, but when he really became aware of the situation in the Middle East was when he walked a 50 kilometer hike with a woman who had grown up in Iraq and compared his lived experience with what she had lived and realized how privileged he was to have been born into a country like Canada where there's freedom of speech, there's democracy, there's property rights. Personal development is the inevitable consequence of this experience. I say that if we do our jobs well, every one of your kids is going to have a crisis of identity while they're here. Because they arrive as your children, they arrive as representatives of their countries, they arrive very proud and all of those things. But once again, when exposed to the diversity around them, they realize that they are all unique human beings with very distinct cultural histories. And by the time they graduate, they have a much stronger sense of who they are and what they believe in. And then finally, the outdoors. We have a department here called Atlantic Outdoors. Outdoor education, outdoor experience has always been at the heart of UWC Atlantic. And the outcome we hope will be peace and a sustainable future led by individuals who show courageous action, lead by personal example, and demonstrate selfless leadership. So just to sum up, all staff here, both the teaching staff and the non-teaching staff, contribute to the co-curricular and well-being programs through a core commitment to our mission, vision, and values in which we place the trusting and supportive relationship formed with and between students at the heart of the enterprise. We work on a first name basis here to signal that we are partners in this. Obviously there's always hierarchy, but we try to the best of our ability to remove that. As a community, we believe in the growth mindset, that intelligence, personality, and character can be developed in a person's true potential is unknown and unknowable, even to themselves, and that staff and students have much to learn from and with each other. So what you will see on reports is not just the academic achievement, but what we call effort and engagement grades. And we keep it simple. You can either exceed expectations, meet expectations, or not meet expectations. And the only students I call into my office to meet are the ones who are not meeting expectations. We have students who come from incredibly difficult backgrounds, refugees, war-torn countries, disrupted educational backgrounds, no English. So it would be completely inappropriate for me to be questioning academic results. But the one thing they can control is their effort and engagement. So that's where we place the emphasis. And I'm happy to say that the second years for your students are an incredible group of role models. 10% of that group exceeded expectations in the 11 metrics that we measure. 75% exceeded expectations in eight of the 11. They're an incredibly motivated and engaged groups, group and they're absolutely committed to being mentors for your kids. As I've already said, we also believe in giving students appropriate and authentic responsibilities as part of their learning journey, allowing them the, <coughs> to develop their courage and capacity to test their limits, to try, fail, and try again in a safe environment. And I'm sure many of your kids have had wonderful achievements, but I can guarantee you they will meet a community member who is even better. And that's part of the humbling experience of attending UWC. No matter what you've accomplished, you're in a community of high achievers who have done great things and are determined to do even greater things in the future. And then finally, we do have the small aspiration to be at the vanguard of redefining education for the 21st century and to share our successes and failures within the wider educational community. The current structure of education around the world remains one that at best is sort of early 20th century, probably 19th century. The skills and attributes that young people will need to be successful in the future are not curriculum based, they're interdisciplinary. Group work is essential, project based learning is essential, design thinking is essential. So no pressure on Sean, 
He's been hired to bring this all together, working with our staff and students this year. So you'll be hearing lots about that. But we also want to reclaim our position as the flagship of the UWC movement and to develop graduates and community members who personify the values through their action and personal example. So just to let you know who's in the room today, we have Kate Vinson, who's our Vice Principal of Education. He's over here. Sean McInerney, Director of Learning Innovation. Valentina Mendelevich, Head of Tutors and Student Affairs. Gabor Vinza, Head of Studies and IB Coordinator. Louise Wheeler, Head of Year for this year group. And Guar Thomas, who heads up our Philanthropy Partnership and Engagement Division. And just one last thing I want to mention about being the reassuring presence of adults. So you will all have met your kid's house parent. Hopefully you've heard from their tutor as well. So that's the team that Valentina heads up, so she's Head of Tutors and Student Affairs, and then we've introduced Louise's position of Head of Year. But Louise also forms part of a team which we call the Learning Centre, TLC, which is a, a room in the castle that offers student workspace, but also support in language learning, additional learning needs, and social-emotional support. So we have two psychologists as part of that team as well. So we very much believe that we have the safety net there to catch your kids when they fall. But just to reiterate, we will let them fall because we think that's essential for their resilience moving into the future. So thank you once again for entrusting us. We aspire to be in regular communication through you, through the tutor, but also through regular newsletters. We're relaunching our webpage this year. Um, and if you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Thank you. Thank you.